Welcome to another episode of the Men of the House podcast. This is Richard, your favorite Irish Mexican, coming to you on a Wednesday. <clears throat> so ideally, you know, I talked on the last episode about consistency. Therefore, I am trying to remain consistent and put out another episode roughly about... A week later, even though technically Dia de los Muertos was um, seven days ago, no, six days ago versus seven. So hopefully I'll aim for Wednesdays or Thursdays for new episodes. But regardless, um, that's the goal. Consistency kind of trumps everything. Um, when it comes to, uh, things like this, writing, um, playing music, practicing guitar, working out, diet, um, you know, consistency over time is kind of the goal and what I'm going for. So, anywho, um, I just got back from the gym not too long ago, typed up a little outline so I could do this podcast, but um, I cut my workout a little short and I'm a little disappointed, but it was because the gym still hasn't changed their clocks since time change. And my brain was mostly looking going okay i'm trying to get this workout in i want to come home i want to record an episode of the podcast um possibly shower go out and do some delivery so i can be home um early this evening and spend time with the family because my daughter doesn't have practice today for a play that they're doing so this is kind of an early day, although we do got to do some homework. But what brought us here is, let's start with time change. So, of course, everybody knows we had time change Saturday night, Sunday morning. Um, I didn't personally receive any benefit from it because uh, my mother had to fly out to Virginia. She flew into D.C., um, which I was a little concerned because there were actual, you know, some protests and stuff going on um, over there. But she had to fly into D.C., rent a car, and drive to Virginia. And due to the time of the flight, we had to get up at 4 in the morning so I could get her to the airport, get her checked in and whatnot. And so that kind of messed up my sleep a little bit. And um, later that day... I ended up taking a four-hour nap and waking up a little bit later in the evening, which made it more difficult to go back to sleep. So, you know, then we're trucking along Monday. I think I had a doctor's appointment. My daughter had a doctor's appointment because she's had a cough. I just had an annual physical to get an annual lab draw. Um... And a medication refill for blood pressure medication and Singular, which is kind of like I grew up with asthma. Um, so I have to keep those because the pulmonologist says that it's essentially like birth control for asthmatics. Um, I would always kind of stop taking it because it's not something that you can tell if it's working. You feel it or you don't. But once the physician kind of explained that, hey, it's like birth control you're not going to feel it unless you're not taking it and you end up with pneumonia. But, you know, that's kind of one of the things as it relates to that is since being laid off in December of 2020, um, I really haven't been sick. You know, I spent 12 years in healthcare working in emergency rooms, uh, level one trauma. You get a lot of sick people. And then managing two primary care clinics with urgent cares and visiting specialties. But um, essentially, you're around sick people all the time. 
and it could have been stress it could have been exposure um, not a hundred percent sure but whatever it was um, I was sick quite a bit and over the past three years since being out of healthcare, I really haven't been sick I mean I've had you know kind of these common cold type things sniffles allergies I don't know whatever you call it but um nothing more than a couple days or nothing that some mucinex benadryl or you know something like that won't fix swig and iquil here and there but um yeah I really haven't been sick and I've been grateful for that um because I think about you know I don't have health insurance I'm a self-pay person um but you know $200 a year versus what I used to pay probably over $200 every two weeks just for health health insurance for the family. Then you got to meet your deductibles. So all your co-pays in full are going towards deductibles. You're meeting those um, plus x-rays, lab works, everything else. But I'm pretty sure I've saved quite a bit of money the past three years. And in that three years, um, you know, I did work in healthcare at the beginning of the pandemic, um, did that for nine months into the pandemic, um, had two grandparents both pass away from COVID, but, um, luckily for me, I never got it until July of 2022. That was the first time I got it. Um, I did feel like shit, um, mostly in my body. Lungs were a little meh, but um, I think I fared well by comparison um, because I was actually super afraid of getting COVID because having grown up with asthma and um, always having kind of like lung problems. I mean, the last big time I got sick was probably 2019 or 2020 and I had double pneumonia, both lungs. I mean, it's pretty much a shit show. So, you know, there is that concern that <clears throat> when you get COVID, because it's primarily a respiratory disease, that somebody with an underlying factor like that um, would not fare so well. So I was concerned, but um, I fared well, got over that, and... Kind of since then, you know, I've really been focusing on um, trying to be as healthy as possible. I kind of waver in and out. Um, pretty consistent. I can go like periods of being consistent. And then uh, kind of what happens to me is um, my routine gets thrown off. Whether it's by a sick child, this, that, the other. And then all of a sudden you're kind of on a little break. Um, which is kind of today getting back to the gym. Um, it's kind of part of getting back into that consistency. I did some strength training. I did some cardio, even though I did cardio the past two days, kind of getting back into strength training, get the muscles movement, moving, get sore a little bit, um, and kind of get back because strength training, um, it's healthy. And it makes me feel good mentally. So that's kind of the point of that. And today is um, getting back on track. Because like I said, I had that four-hour nap on Sunday. That screwed me up. And then um, Monday, I took more naps or went to bed early. It was like I just couldn't stay awake. And um, I woke up at 1.30 a.m., Tuesday morning, Monday night, essentially, and um, with that, I was up all day yesterday from 1.30 a.m., um, and so, you know, kind of the goal with that is it's hard to want to be productive when you're up at 1.30 and you got the whole day, but luckily for me, I Uber, I didn't have to work if I don't want to work, um, so I kind of stayed home with the dogs with my mom being out of town, um, 
you know, we have an older dog who's probably 18, 19 years old. He's on his last limb. Um, he requires a lot of attention, so I stayed home with him. Make sure he doesn't shit or piss in the house, because he does often. And even when we take him out, he, uh, twice this week, he's already fallen down the hill in the gully. We have a backyard, and then there's a drop-off, um, and although it's separated by rocks, he has somehow managed to figure out a way to fall down the hill six in the morning in the dark. Then I have to go get him. It's wet. It's cold. Or it was Monday or Sunday, whenever it happened. And then you get thorns and all kinds of shit. Wet shoes. Yeah. No fun. But, you know, kind of getting back those past few weeks as you can remember from the last episode and everything that's gone on it's you know it would describe my life of when you're out of routine it's a little bit like um a water cap that won't screw on the bottle that won't thread on correctly it's crooked a little bit but hopefully last night getting a good night's sleep waking up hitting the gym this morning kind of back on routine um yeah, getting that water bottle cap threaded on. But of course, yesterday during that period of wanting to stay awake, um, I entered the TikTok time suck. Um, it's kind of one of those things you go on like, hey, I just want to kind of see. And then all of a sudden, you spend a couple hours um, on TikTok. Watching who knows what. For me personally, um, I kind of I can get sucked into uh, watching people cook. Um, anyone who knows me knows that I cooked for many years. For any of you who don't know me, I started in kitchens at a young age. I've worked everything from casual stuff to I help open up a bagel coffee shop, something similar to an Einstein, but it was a private place. Um, back in 97, that's kind of how I started. Um, then I ended up at Pizza Hut McAllister's at the same time, then transferred to Chili's, and that took me to South Florida. And then, you know, cooking there, somebody I knew was like, hey, um, they got a job at this nice steak and seafood house, and they brought me because they knew I could cook. So I went there, and I did that for several years. Then transferred over to a fusion place, Bistro Zenith in Boca Raton, Florida. Um, then I kind of left cooking and didn't go back until 2006. And I was a personal trainer at Gold's Gym. Like training people, hated Gold's Gym. It's so sales focused, even though you have a sales team. So... Um, I left there and just kind of went back to my cooking, cooked at the Springs uh, Seafood and Steakhouse on the river in New Braunfels, and then uh, got a job at um, Lakeway Country Club outside of Austin, and that's how my wife and I got to Austin and uh, worked there. Met a friend, Layla, if you're listening. Um, we met, I think we had our interviews the same day, 2006. We started on uh, Halloween, roughly, because I remember the wor worms and dirt kind of dessert thing, um, 2006, but we've known each other since then. So we used to carpool, right to work together. But um, yeah. I can totally get sucked into watching people cook, prepare food, um, which I kind of don't mind too much, but um, yeah, it is a time suck, but kind of one of the funniest things was <clears throat> I scrolled past this one video and they were actually refugees in a Syrian refugee camp. Speaking a little bit of English. Tap, 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 tap. Go on, you guys. Tap, 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 tap. But it just blows my mind. 
you know, I'm not even a huge TikTok fan. I don't even know how the hell it works with badges, gifts, likes, what you're supposed to do with them, what you're competing for. But, you know, when I look at it, initially I'm like, fuck. Now I got to compete with refugees in Syrian refugee camps. You're competing on TikTok or, you know, you got to compete for your likes, your gifts, whatever. I mean, I'm not really that kind of person. Like, I don't feel the need to compete, but, you know, you get the idea. For whatever purpose TikTok is serving, it's just bananas. People want to rip. But, I mean, this is the time we live in now. You know, technology is, you know, you probably have homeless people that have phones and can watch YouTube, can do all kinds of things that we could never do before. Um, but, you know, kind of the crazy thing with that is... Um, or what's kind of magical is, you know, the technology. It's able to document history a little bit. Um, but even life, like life inside of a refugee camp, what are they doing on a daily basis? I mean, you know, probably wildly unpopular to say just given the circumstances in the world. But, you know, I mean, there were no... Imagine had there been cell phone cameras at Auschwitz, you know. Um, we see, we hear the stories, we see the stories, we look at the documentation that's been provided, however that's been preserved, but, you know, kind of with technology, the way it is today is um, it's just a much more instant and real form of capturing, documenting history. Um, you know, there was nothing bad going on in the refugee camp, but essentially, you know, they're waiting for whatever's going to happen to them and killing time by TikToking. And I sat there and thought, well, surely all these badges, gifts, whatever means something. And I'm sure you can cash them out for something and use them for something. But I guess I was kind of like, well... Hopefully he's got Apple Pay on that phone. Um, I don't know that you can buy anything in a refugee camp, but um, I doubt there's any way, anything to cash out those roses, gifts, whatever, sunsets, hearts, um, however monetization works on TikTok. Um, I don't know how he's capitalizing on that money and getting it. I doubt there's any ATMs, but... um. I just found it very interesting. And then, of course, I have to ask myself, why am I watching this? Um, is it interesting? I'm watching some things that I can be interested in, whether it's cooking, people playing guitar, um, people getting tattoos. Um, but also, I have to ask myself, are you trying to make connections is it about connections? Um, there was this article I saved. It came out on September 18th, but it was on CNN. It was a CNN article um, talking about male loneliness epidemic. And it was really targeting um, kind of the initial basis of the discussion was stay-at-home dads, um, which in a way I guess I might consider myself a little bit of that now versus compared to before. My wife works more full-time where she was kind of the stay-at-home one when I was working full-time in healthcare, and then there was a little bit of time where we both worked, and then um, I got laid off, and she's been doing more of the working, and I've been doing more stay-at-home Uber the more flexible kind of stuff but you know needless to say um very interesting good article um i felt like i connected with it and that's the reason i'm bringing it up is because i think there's a way you know one it fits into the theme of the podcast the men of the house um we're all these individual men we share these things but we're also 
kind of separated. Um, we lack meaningful connections. We we get isolated, and as everybody knows, like from the pandemic, it's very unhealthy, especially for your mental health. But you know, essentially, they're saying it's because. Um, Men, sometimes we lack meaningful connections. Um, sometimes it's considered uh, less masculine to maybe have close relationships with friends or, you know, um, whatever it is to have someone to lean on. Um, we have less mentorship. But, you know, it kind of made me think of my own journey and how I feel and kind of how I relate to it. And that is... You know, growing up as a boy, it's like you have your boyfriends and you're all like kid friends, you know. You're kind of divided between boys and girls because little boys don't like little girls. They pick on little girls um, on the playground. But, you know, essentially, you're like these little packs, pack animals, Um you play football together, you do sports together, you're, you know, sleepovers, playing tech mobile, whatever it is we used to do, go camping, um, play cops and robbers, play war games with eggs in the woods. Um, you know, and I guess if you have a girlfriend, you kind of still hang out with your boys and then you do your thing. But then like, let's say for me, then I go in the military even more pack and herd mentality. Um, you know, and I worked in kitchens. It was mostly a male, you know, in the 90s and 2000s. There was definitely less women. There were some, but it was definitely kind of like a, you know, mostly men. But regardless, you know, it... You know, the idea, kind of what I'm trying to get across here is that um, you find your person, you have children, you create your little thing, your own little world, and you're kind of separated from that pack. And, um, but, you know, just like you leave your family to start your family, you leave kind of your group of friends to start your own little family and um, unit and your wife is now your best friend versus maybe your male or woman best friend growing up. Um, and, you know, it's kind of like being cast out in a way, but not really because you're gaining something. You're gaining that which you wanted or that which is natural, which is to create your own pack, create your own family, start your own new thing, your new traditions. But, um, you know, and you can see it too. I listen to it when I listen to, you know, podcasts about military people um, who get out and, you know, it's that isolation. They're not away. They're not with their friends. They're not with their people anymore. So um, I get it. I relate um, but it's kind of like, you know, my whole day, like I have some friends I text, um, you know, one of my friends, we've been friends since we were six years old. We're both 47. So 41 years, you know, I'll text him, but it's, he lives two hours away. So, you know, it's just different. Um, but, you know, maybe if I did a jujitsu class or found something that I could connect with other men with um, and fellowship with, I suppose you could do so at church. You could have a group. But the article mentioned there's a national at dad at home dads network and then another place called City Dads where people can go and find connections. Um, but essentially, that's kind of what I was saying. You know, I mean, the most interaction I had was we went to a, one of my daughter's friend's birthday parties on Saturday and um, you know I spent time talking to that dad another dad um, but we were there with our wives 
Um, but that's kind of the extent of it. And so, you know, it's this very thing where you go from where as a young boy, you spend all your time with your male friends and other males. But then you get older and you step away and you do your own thing and you're naturally a little more isolated. And, um, yeah, it's difficult. Whether you're a stay-at-home dad or you go to work, um, I mean, you know, one of the biggest things that changes for me is, um, one, I'm an Uber driver, so I'm typically alone. I don't have much interaction. But, um, I don't go to another place like I used to for work. So I don't have that fellowship with other people, um, whether it's men or not. So that definitely contributes to the feeling of isolation. And then of course I drive around all day, mostly by myself, but I enjoy it. Um, but I do enjoy, you know, getting out when I go in to get someone's food. And if I can have a positive interaction with the person at the front desk or a host, a hostess, whatever, um, that's enjoyable to me. So that's about the extent of my fellowship. Maybe chatting, leaving a comment on an Instagram or a TikTok or seeing somebody's live if they're interesting, um, talking about something that's worthwhile and chiming into the conversation. And, you know, I think when somebody who's similarly in my demographic, whether it be age Um, whatever, if I make a comment and they respond and we're kind of on the same page and wavelength, um, you know, that's a little bit of a connection. Um, but that's about the extent that some of us get, maybe many of us. Um, and especially like, you know, my last job, I was a manager, um, a leader, if you will. And then as a man, you're supposed to be a leader of your family. Um, Being a leader, being at the top can be isolating and lonely too. Um, You have to make all the hard decisions. You have to say no. Um, Sometimes to the people you care about the most, and maybe it's because you do care about them. But, uh, you know, either way, that's kind of going to conclude what I have to say for the day. Um, I'm about to get out of here, go clean up, go make some deliveries, go make some money since I got my car back. Um, and I want to spend the evening with my family because I love them and, um, help my daughter do her homework because these are the times that matter. You know, being there, being present is is sometimes more important than what you can give them um, monetarily or, you know, possession-wise. Being there, being present, you know, that's all we can do. And um, leave all the dads with that. Get out there, make connections. You can always connect with me at jahippy 512 on Instagram or at the Men of the House on Instagram, Men of the House Podcast, or the Men of the House Podcast on TikTok, or rpaul.craft at gmail.com. You can hit me up, say whatever you want to say, make a connection. Maybe each other is all we have. Um, That's what life is about, though. Connections, love, respect. Um, helping one another, being there for one another, sometimes even if it's only as an ear. But, you know, we give what we can, give what you have. I'm going to leave everybody with that. You guys have a great day, and peace out.